Hello there, everyone. Welcome back to some more Let's Play Underrail. In the last episode, we had moved all of the stuff in the barrels near the merchants in Core City into our home and did a tiny bit of renovation therein. I then decided that we were going to go to Foundry and purchase a workbench from West to give me some extra points, effective skill, in electronics so I could make a taser. Then I realized I don't think I actually have the taser recipe. Yeah, we, we don't. And that's at Southgate Station. Plus, we could check Southgate Station's merchant to see if they're selling any better aluminized cloths. We can make some different armor. And then, on the way there, we fought this bunch of iron heads and were victorious. Wow! Didn't even die once! <laughs> That's the way it should be. Thanks to some grenades that landed in places that I didn't think they should land in. And, but it was, it was amazing. I then realized that we hadn't started any of Jack Quicksilver's quests. And we should. So we've started that process, too. In any case, I'm now back here having basically completed Foundry's Jack Quicksilver quest, and just talked with Ohad something over in um, Core City. We're still working our way towards Southgate Station. It is far away, but we're going to make our way there. Hopefully, maybe in this episode, probably, perhaps. <laughs> so, here's our character, once again, in case you have forgotten. Here's our stat line. Our skills. We are, once again, a hybrid character. A melee, using spears, because I wanted to use them, with daggers in case we just have some leftover points. Uh, mostly also because I think it's thematic to walk around with a quarter staff, pretending we're a wizard, which is what we're, we're, um, I'm doing, at least. We have some dodge and evasion, because we are a dodge and evade character. This means we want to stick to low amounts of armor penalties. So that we can benefit from having dodge and evasion, as opposed to just throwing those points away into the gutter by wearing metal armor or things that give us 40% of armor penalty or the like. In any case, we have quite a bit of dodge, sorry, uh, quite a bit of evasion and a little bit of dodge. We're relying now on our uncanny dodge to keep us out of harm's way for anything that could potentially do incredible melee damage to us. Some lock picking, some pickpocket. We. I just realized we have a 1-1-1 one, one, one lockpicking. We may need more in lockpicking in the future. In any, any case, this gets us into a few barrels and containers. Pickpocket gets us into a few closer to people's containers, what's in their pockets. We have an incredible amount of mechanics and tailoring, enough that we probably won't need to level these anymore until the end of the game. If well, sorry, we won't have to level these at all anymore. We will be relying on our workbenches and any other drugs we can create that increase our intelligence and or food that we can have which might do the same or give us a few more points in case we just don't have the crafting flat out. Some electronics, we're raising this to 101 next. Metathermics, which is our major damaging psionic power and some temporal manipulation as well. For our feats, I guess we're going to cover these <laughs> since we're doing a, a big synopsis this morning. Nimble reduces our armor penalty, which gives us more movement points and more dodge and evasion if our armor penalty is actually at zero as well. I intend to be wearing greater siphoner leather most of the time after it's infused with super steel, which I think has an armor penalty of about 10 or 15 or 12 percent or something of that sort, which will benefit from this, along with tabby boots. That's the plan, at least. So our armor penalty should be at 15% or slightly lower than it. So we will be very dodge and evade -y. Paranoia makes up for having a low perception skill. Gives us a better chance to detect traps and stealth targets as well, I think. Our detection, yep, increased by 20%. I forgot, this also gives us, by the way, five extra initiative. So whenever we roll to see who's going first, this is effectively like having root soda. Uh, drank. Very good. Sprint gives us the movement points we need to get away or get close to targets. Tranquility. Assuming we haven't taken any damage, which is not, which is more likely when we have a better shield. 
This reduces the action point cost of all Psy abilities by 5 while we're at full health. A nice way to counteract some of the very low temporal manipulation abilities in particular. Making them free. Weaponsmith. 5% extra crit chance with all weapons that we craft. That are melee, I think, in nature, and that aren't fist weapons. We're using spears and daggers, so we benefit from that. Escape Artist. Gets us out of all roots. This has saved our lives in deep away at least like six or eight times. We would have died so many times there. And will prove extremely useful in the future when we're out in the uh, Black Sea at least. Thanks to spiders and nets. Pyromaniac. This gives us a chance to set things on fire with our fire spells. We are not using ice spells. We are probably one of the few people who are taking metathermics who aren't using a single ice spell. <laughs> Why not? Why not? You guys know me by now. I like showing things off and making things difficult and proving to the world that you don't have to take the best abilities to have fun in a game. No one cares. <laughs> in any case, this because it sets people on fire, this also makes those people run around uh, in fear. This will affect all fire abilities that we use, too. I think, I think it might affect our exothermic aura, but don't quote me on that. I'm not 100% sure it, it works on that. Cheap Shots took this just last level. Increases the critical damage that we deal with all melee weapons by 50%. And gives us a small chance, 15% chance, to incapacitate a target for one turn. Exposed Weakness. Reduces, uh, rather, we ignore 50% of the target's mechanical resistance and threshold. I, I believe is how it, it works. Normally it's for two turns, but for a specialization we've taken, it makes it three turns. Pre-Med. Reduces the action point cost of the next Psy ability used by 100%, and its Psy cost by 50%. It's an incredible feat. I, uh, I, oh, I think it also extends the range of the ability by a bit, too. It's really nice. It's really nice, and one of the few psionic feats we can take, considering that our will is still only six at this point in the game. Uncanny Dodge. All attacks in melee meant for us miss us, equal to the amount of times... Related to our dodge, divided by 30. So, six, I think, it's six attacks currently. It's our effective dodge, by the way, not our actual dodge. Which means that we definitely want to benefit more from um, Nimble, because that gives us more dodge. Which we're not currently benefiting from, thanks to the armor we're wearing. Psycho Neuro Flexibility. This, uh, normally... The more psionic powers you have slotted in your brain, the more expensive those abilities are. By 10% per psionic type that you have. Metathermics, psychokinesis, thought control, temporal manipulation. If you had one of each of those in your head, you'd be paying an extra 40% of psi cost to use any ability. Psychoneural flexibility reduces this penalty by one single ten, by 10%. Really nice for characters who are taking two sonic powers, or, well, actually any amount, but two in particular because now you're only paying 100%. There is another one of these, by the way, these feats, which if you have one type of ab uh, sonic ability in your head, it gets reduced by 10%. I suppose I should mention that, that this, you really only benefit from this if you do have two abilities in your head. It doesn't reduce it by 10% if you only have one. Future Orientation reduces the cooldowns of all of my psionic temporal manipulation... Uh, nope, saying it wrong. No, no, that's correct. Temporal manipulation, psi abilities that have a cooldown by one turn. But they all now gain a five extra uh, action point cost to use them. And then we have Hunter. This is one we picked up in the game by talking with someone. This uh, is basically useless. <laughs> but we can kill cave hoppers a little more effectively, I suppose. With daggers and spears, both of which we're using. And Psy Empathy, which we have to take in order to use psionic abilities. Uh, gives us a Psy Bar and reduces our hit points by 20%. Finally, our specializations. We're using Exposed Weakness plus one duration. So this way, just in case I have to run away from whatever it is I hit with it, uh, maybe I can go back and wallop it with our spear a little more. In particular, Exposed Weakness I took to deal with bots. Premeditation cooldown has been reduced by one turn, so it goes from 5 to 4. And we're doing an extra 20% damage with all burning damage that we deal with when we set something on fire. 
All right, I'll try to make sure to put a skip link in here for you guys so you don't have to worry about listening to all that nonsense. And let's continue to get going. Still haven't looked up. I meant to look up the phone quest. I didn't. And I meant to look up what this does. See if I can figure out what the Deathstalker Claw Charm does. <laughs> I have no clue what that does still. There's a phone. Yeah, and I'm going to pass right by it because I don't know what to do. Maybe I put a break here. You know I am. Viewer, I'll be right back because I'm going to keep forgetting to do this. An entire three minutes of searching the internet <laughs> has revealed that there isn't too much information about uh, this quest out here. And apparently uh, it's really kind of too late for us. So interacting with the phones will eventually give you hints to interact with a gentleman who's a hacker of some sort named Freak. You actually can find out a little bit of information about this gentleman earlier from... I think it's from the phone we picked up, or from other people that we haven't talked to yet, or items I might have missed. In any case, uh, you have to kind of listen to the phones and talk to uh, the answering machine on the phones to get hints as to buttons to press on certain ones to gain access to this gentleman. You'll be led to where he's located. I'm going to skip this quest because we've already kind of missed a gentleman, I believe, at this point, since we're further along in the quest line, now the main quest, and have to investigate the Institute of Chort. Also because I don't want you guys to have to sit there and listen to the tones on the phone. So it's going to be like having tinnitus. So I will spare you guys that. And hopefully someone else can show you how to access the gentleman who isn't me. We're gonna just bypass it at the moment, or I bypass it altogether with our character here. Rat hounds. And this leads to the iron head block, so we should probably go this way. Since we didn't quite clear all the iron heads out yet. Alright, not bad. I mean, piece of cake. They are just rat hounds after all. We got one leather, two leathers. You know what that means? Rat hound leather armor. And then we can break down that leather armor. For fabric scraps. Oh, while I was at Foundry, I also purchased some Meta Worm Gizzards, which I always will do if I'm in that area. Uh, let's think here. We will go the Iron Head way, I think. Which means I will mark down here. We didn't go east. Oh, there's a tunnel that goes down here, too. Let's quickly pop down. I don't think there's crawlers in this area. Rat hounds. And this leads to that one facility? It does. And the red dream mushroom's back. We're gonna we're absolutely gonna grab that really quick. Since we're in this area, let's clear the rat hound. Actually, let's go back uh back this way. Clear the rat hounds, explore this that one cave area. Thank <laughs> you. 
I like the increased intelligence here on this difficulty when the Red Hounds decide to actually circle you. Since that since they normally wouldn't do that. Oh my goodness, Tim, you're getting quite a few more hearts. <laughs> Oh, I can't just drop them. I can't. You won't believe how much blood we're going to go through when we finally do begin uh, using utilizing biology. Okay, let's push on. Where does this lead? I don't know. So I'm going to say DNE North. Another Red Dream Mushroom. Oh, you know, I was saying how these are always, almost always guarded by crawlers or death stalkers. Apparently that is not the case. Like, maybe half of them are. Unless we find one down this passage. I don't think we are. Okay, I do want to get to Southgate Station. And we should probably continue to do Jack Quicksilver's quest line there. So that's what that's our objective. Rather what I'm going to do. So let's not Jack Quick we're gonna find we're gonna continue I don't know what I said. <laughs> I'm gonna continue Jack Quicksilver's quest. Normal lockpick. Junk pile. Ah, just junk in you. Ah, the iron heads. In a while since we've been here, huh? Seems like just yesterday we were dying to Baylor's sledgehammer dudes. Okay, so if I recall, we go up this way, then we head south, but I don't, without, I think, hacking, I don't think we can get through this door. Let's see if we can. Oh, boy, you scared the heck out of me, Warthog. Okay, now, I remember this. There is an auto turret on the other side of this, if I remember correctly. So we're going to enter combat to activate our shield, have some morphine, and move in. We need to get into this room before we're dead. Nope, we missed. Of course we would. Adrenaline. Okay. We want to move over here. That was so lucky that we were able to incapacitate him. We're not going to strike at him this turn. Okay. Uh, I'll search the corpse. Traps! Oh, now we're... Hmm. Now we're overburdened and we're still in combat, Tim. This is going to give you action point penalties and what have you. We can just stick all of this nonsense in here at the moment. Now, because we're fatigued, we're going to let the fatigue expire. 
man, this auto turret. Okay. This will not be as difficult as I'm making it out to be. We've dealt with auto turrets before. We'll deal with this one the same way. Okay. Good. Not so difficult in the end. Wouldn't have done it without this... Freak well, maybe we would have survived uh, without having this efficient medium shield emitter. It would have been very tough, though. Ooh, hold on. That was a garb... Well, we can put the garbage grenade inside here. Okay, so... I want the bullets... It's a respectable assault rifle, but not worth repairing. Ooh, this armor, though, is worth quite a pretty penny. But that's... We're at our weight limit. We're at our weight limit. So let's make some repair kits here. And use one of them on that armor. And it's all going to be a waste, but we'll use the other one on it, too. Oh, yeah. I should have used it on this armor. Uh, the rest of the stuff, it really isn't worth taking. But I hate just leaving st stuff behind. So, we'll just mark here. Okay, so they come back. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave some of the bigger things behind. <laughs> some, of, sorry, some of the creature bits behind. <laughs> As well, because we're gonna have more things to kill on the way. We have things here. Why don't we use our core tech mask at the moment? Lower level mines, we're able to detect them pretty much instantly upon getting close to them. If I recall right, there's lunatics here. And this is a mistake. Oh, that's a freezer. I'm gonna run up and see if we can set them on fire. We're, I'm relying on this, so this is a mis this is a mistake. Okay, did not set them on fire. I will recurrence the damage, though. And maybe we can flashbang him? That was lucky that we did not get caught in that. We are about to say we're making noise, though. Why am I running around that? Why am I doing that? Is there someone there? I'm guessing we're just not allowed in that spot. Oh man, I hope you're not- that's not an accurate statement, Brawler. <laughs> Alright, Tim, what are you doing? Can we slow down the Pyromaniac? Uh, Pyromaniac. Because I don't want to deal with her crossbow. And we just run this way. 
There is another enemy here, by the way. There's not just two. There's a psychopath or something. There's an invisible psionicist here. Oh, you can reach me. That's bad. Hmm. I'm going to try to run for the exit. This stinks. We're going to have to come back here a different way. Okay. If she's using fire bolts, I'm going to use exothermic aura. And we're going to actually move up. Spread the fire a little bit. I'm going to also use our morphine. Why not? It's just a little, it's just a bit of cash. Okay, that's what I expected. Oh my God, that hurt! Wow, what the heck? Uh, the morphine may kill us unless we can kill these two really quickly. And we can't. So let's use Uncanny Dodge. Yep, that was four. Oh, there's two of them because we were biolocated. Okay. I think we're oh wow we're so dead yeah because they yep yep because they can still reach me okay uh load the auto save uh, i don't feel too bad about that psionicists are awful <laughs> uh we'll get a little closer Once again, I would like to not use a grenade right away. Oh, well, that's a shame. Flashbang. The others, yep, will totally hear that. Uh oh, and this time they see me a little earlier. And this time I'm not going to kill this guy, am I? We have to use adrenaline. And then we have to escape. Oh, that was lucky. We resisted that. We're, we're, we have to run. Oof. Snack power's missing like that. Really stinks. That's two, that's two misses. I don't have what it takes to run. We don't have the action points. We're short one action point. So we're dead. Yeah, we're 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 dead. That's 
That's it. Uh, do we even want to go this way? <laughs> do we even go this way at this rate? Maybe we don't. Maybe we can kill this guy? Without needing to use a grenade? Nope, we're dead. Oh! Yes, we're still dead. <laughs> uh, maybe we don't go this way. Maybe we, uh, we go a different way. Uh... Okay. We're gonna kill the freezer and then we are just gonna run. We're we're not sticking. We're we're not staying here. This is this is too tough. Unfortunately, I need to put a great deal more damage on this guy. Ten action points. Oh wow, okay. Well we didn't leave combat. We didn't leave the room in combat. We were able, able to kill that guy without needing to use a grenade. And I can just let those lunatics exist on this side at the moment. So I'll just mark them down here. I thought there was another one that patrolled in this area, but I guess I am incorrect. Oh no! You... I suddenly remembered the direction we're heading in. My goodness, there's a lot of death awaiting us, viewer. Let's uh, break down a few things here really quick. We don't need that knife. I got an overcoat I do want to keep. We don't care about the doctor's coat. on you heard that that's NPCs going into stealth mode there is a checkpoint here from these bandits they'll let you pass for paying some money but I don't like paying money to these guys we'll stay here a little bit and just stare and we can see yep the bandit here as well There's another stealth gentleman, at least one, in this area as well. I think there's a... Oh! There's a sniper here in hard mode also. Mm. <laughs> Maybe we just pay, Tim. You've already died a bunch. We'll try it once. Not, uh, there's a sniper. Okay, so we do see everyone. Ooh, that's a nasty trap. The place right there. Good thing we saw that as well. All right, let's just, let's try it. What's the worst that happens? We die? We have a, we're, we're already dying a lot. So I want a flashbang. These two. Well, we got the sniper, which is 
I'll take that as a victory. We also incapacitated the hunter for one round. There is another one. There's another enemy here, though. So I can't celebrate just yet. Uh, there's a guy with a dagger. Let's use recursion here. We really want to kill the sniper next, and we're going to use uh, Uncanny Dodge because I think he's right. I think he's right in here somewhere. Wow, that critical hit. Let's use Exothermic Aura. The gentleman is using a... Uh, a suit that makes him immune to f being set on fire. But his friend is not wearing such. Uh-oh. This is really bad. Oh, okay, we weren't incapacitated, only he was. Wow! <laughs> what is what is happening here? Wow! We got so lucky, and they got so unlucky with the incapacitations and the flashbangs we've used. Man, wow! I can't believe it. Okay, we're gonna want to leave some stuff here. Well, I'll come back here to loot the rest of the what we defeated in this area. Isn't there a trap right in front of this? There's not. Mark cards. Okay, so then I will leave... Let's leave all the loot I was... Oh! Hold on. We have a way to solve our weight issues with us. We have that merchant's belt we picked up on the way earlier. And all we're going to be seeing is rat hounds and the like up ahead of us. Yeah, so we don't have to leave the stuff behind. 8.6 Harbinger. No special things with it. He, he could still easily kill us. A shield. Okay, overcoat. Take everything. Take everything. But hunters generally don't have great stuff on them. Leave behind the special bolts. Take back the flashbang. Ooh. Yeah, garbage on the hunter. We can just recycle everything that she was using, including the crossbow and the boots. Take the ammo out of the weapon. Ooh, there's more boots here. What type of boots are these? Bladed solid padding pig leather boots. Not bad. If you didn't have, uh, if you weren't able to make better boots, shame is always unarmed attacks. I guess it's because you're supposed to represent kicking opponents. I think it's one of the animations if you are indeed unarmed. And what does the last bandit have? Oh, this is just this is the melee guy. Yeah, he'll have garbage on him. Just recycle this and his leather armor. 
Alright, that wasn't so bad. Yeah. That's normally a really difficult battle. I kept normally I'm sniped or uh, incapacitated. Uh, the hunter usually gets me with a shock bolt and I'm dead because the friends then uh, assist or the sniper just gets an aim shot and I'm just dead. That's it. <laughs> so I'll take it. I, that's really nice. Not having to worry about that group. That was really lucky. Battle to these lower level rat hounds. I think they're lower level. Then we take all... Oh my goodness. So much leather armor. That's fantastic. Normally, you don't want to see low-level rat hound leather. But we love low-level rat hound leather. Because that lets us get a bunch of... It's going to take too long. Fabric scraps. Which we can then use to make, obviously, which I, uh, by now you guys have seen it a million times, repair kits. And those repair kits can be used to, to repair the very profitable... How many of these do I have? The very profitable... armors we've just picked up. Okay, and we'll do that a little closer. Actually, no, we should do it right now because that will free up some weight. Oh, uh, we have 20-something pounds. We're not going to be too, that overburdened. And we're about to use a... Yep, we're going to use some explosives here. Oh, there's more rocks there, too. Well, since we're here, we might as well handle that. No! Map, what are you doing? <laughs> I, think, uh, I think my mouse is moving. Get rid of the fog of war that's in this area. And there's a tunnel that goes down right here. I think we've already seen where this ends up. I think that... Actually, I don't... No, I don't know. So we'll come back for it. Oh, how's my spear holding up? Uh... Both of these could use a repair. But we'll have more rat hounds up ahead. So we'll deal with them first. And my goodness, viewer, look where we are. It's been an age since we've been in this area. Not since doing the Omega Station quest for Tanner an age ago. Some fun, some very fun battles. And I guess we will kill these rat hounds. Four ten. Sorry, but I I do this we we do this now. <laughs> oh, I hear what sounds like Amazon outside, so I need to check that. I am expecting 
I think they're lying. I think I'm getting other things I've ordered, but I, no one cares. But I'm going to talk about it anyway. I think they say that my chemicals are coming in today to fight the, the fleas I have in my house since the cats were here months ago. But I think they're coming tomorrow. I think this is just more hospital stuff for me. I go prepared to hospitals, and I keep what I call a bug-out bag with me, since I've had to go to the emergency room so often in my life. The bug-out bag has everything I would need if I have to bug out uh, for a little bit and flee uh, the house and go somewhere for a little bit. ERs and being admitted for about three days in the hospital uh, was pretty common for me. Uh, well, I should say not uncommon that I would have to go at least two or three times a year. So this bag has a, all the toiletries you would normally want to bring with you if you're going someplace, like toothpaste, toothbrushes, soap, and so on. It's got enough uh, boxers and t-shirts for three days, socks as well, some stuff to read to keep me entertained, phone charger and what have you, and a few other odds and ends. And let's go to the commons first. In any case, I have some stuff coming in for that bug out bag today. Some uh, two books to read. I don't remember what they are. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to see what it was I ordered. Hello, Tanner. Tim. What do you think the faceless artifact actually is? A weapon. Or a part of it. What else could have goaded the faceless to rise up such a force against Core City? I admit, I don't know much about the faces I would like, though, so I might be wrong. Well, I found Cornell and the Acid Hunters. Tanner leans in curiously. Excellent. And what of the device? Did you get a hold of it? I've tracked the cube thing to a Cortec research facility in Core City, but Chortis snatched it before I could get to it. Tanner strokes his beard and responds calmly. That is unfortunate. This makes your mission all the more important, since we cannot afford to leave a powerful artifact in the hands of religious zealots. There's an Institute of Chort, located in Upper Undervale. The Chortists must have taken the cube there. You know what must be done, Tim. Find a way to infiltrate it, and retrieve that cube. How do you suggest I do that? I'm not sure. You could always try to go to their gates in Upper Undervale and asking how one would go about joining them. But from what I hear, they are not accepting new members easily. I advise you tread carefully there. They are probably looking for certain characteristics in their candidates. You just have to find out what those are. They will mostly expect you to believe or be accepting of whatever silly doctrine they hold dear. Okay, take care, hey, Mr. Tanner. And we get 2,000 experience points for that. Okay, while we're here, we have the Jack Quicksilver quest, so we might as well start that as well. That starts with this gentleman in the corner, Linux. Let's see if Arlene can tell us about him first. Here for a drink? Oh, we can't. Okay, that's fine. Do I have anything? So, I'm going to sell the stuffed bat... And I'll sell her a root soda. And can I get an eel sandwich? Ooh. Okay, well, we'll still get it. Mr. Lenox Pierce, if I recall correctly. Or Lenox Pierce. Lenox Pierce? Lenox Pierce. The man stares at his nearly empty glass in silence, his mind clearly elsewhere. Lennox Pierce? He snaps out, raising his head to reveal a deathly pair visage. His sluggish eyes soon focus on you, and soon begins mumbling, communicating both with his speech and his alcohol breath. Uh, what? Oh, yes! Oh, I, I, I mean, yes. I'm Lennox Pierce. Are you... Yes, Jack sent me to talk to you. You can call me Tim. Nice meeting you, um, Tim. How are you, uh... How are you doing? I'm just traveling around. Nothing really important. Boring stuff, as usual. Uh, good. Uh, 
That is, that is good. Jack told me you needed some help. That is correct, unfortunately. Look, Tim, I need you to help me find out how my brother died. Pat... Uh, Patrick Pierce, my brother, came to Southgate Station over a year ago. He was a good man. He was good with, um, electronics. That's what he did here. My dear Pat... His voice begins to shake, but he composes himself. Something like a month... Uh, yeah, a month and a half ago, he was found dead in his room. Lying in bed. Dead. I... I came here to see what happened, and I was told he died in his sleep. Tanner, the counselor, he told me Dr. Pasquale checked his... Uh, Pat's body, but doesn't know the exact cause of death. Doesn't bleeding know the cause of death? Okay, calm down, Linux. Calm down. What can I help? What can I do to help you? Damn it all! Just damn it! Look, something's wrong. My brother was a healthy man. He had some back issues, but that's all. I need to know the truth. What if he was killed in some accident, or they're covering it up? What if someone killed him? It's tearing me apart. Tanner won't help me anymore. As far as he's concerned, he's done with it. But I'm not. Uh, I'm not. Cause of death unknown. Yeah, right. That's going to be tough. I can't make any promises, but I'm on the job. Please forgive me. I, I get emotional and... It's really painful to me. He was my older brother. I have no one else. Look, I'm not sure I was understandable enough earlier. I, uh... I'm very tired. I don't sleep well. If you need to ask me something, I'll be here. Oh, I almost forgot. He hands you a keycard. This is my brother room's keycard, in case you need to, uh... Need to check his room. Take it. Okay. I'll go check his room first, then we'll talk. But my hands will check your pockets first, to see if this was the only thing you had. Three flares. Uh... I don't need flares. Or a compass. Hey! See that guy in the corner? The one that looks like a train wreck? That's Linux Pierce. Try not to disturb the poor fellow, okay? Come to the bar if all the other seats are taken. Just... Leave this table alone. What are your thoughts? Uh, oh, sorry. What do you know about Patrick Pierce's death? Looking at his brother over there, I wish I knew more. But I can only tell you what we all know. Pat died in his sleep. Thinking about it, what if Pasquale found out what killed Pat and turned out it was agonizingly painful? And he was struggling the whole time. Would you like to learn something like that? I don't know what's better of the two. I really don't. Can you tell me what he was like as a person? She smiles. Pretty sweet, actually. We used to chat a lot when he showed up. He talked about his horrible past in Core City, how he survived the riots. He felt he did some bad things back then, how he's finally found a way to atone for what he did by leading a more peaceful life. Then Big Brett comes along and starts nagging about those stupid heaters for his hoppers. Okay, thank you. Jonas. Hey, youngster, have yourself a drink. You'll only be rushing about all the time. What do you know about Patrick Pierce's death? Ah, Patrick. Yeah, I knew Patrick. The kid died in his sleep one day, and Doc, Pasquale, couldn't figure out what signed his death sentence. Patrick's brother threw a tantrum, demanded that Doc perform an autopsy again. So he did. Nothing. Still couldn't figure it out. Now, Doc's far too busy saving people's lives to be spending too much time on the dead, you dig? There's so much stuff medicine as a science hasn't even scratched yet. So I can see why someone... Sometimes, you gotta pull the line. Sad. We can't have all the answers. It wasn't a contagious disease or some other devil, and that's the most important thing. What was Patrick like as a person? Eh? Di oh, you said Patrick. Yeah, yeah, he, the kid was good. I remember him talking about his life, his little brother. Both of them were dealt some really bad cards right from the start of their lives, but the kid was a survivor. He was tough. That's what he was. Shame. Let's barter. Do I have anything you want? I do not. And I don't think you have anything I want. You do not. I need to check really quick, everyone, to see if that Am if that was Amazon that came in. So give I'll just stand right here. Okay, we'll go to we'll go to this table. Okay, I'll be right back.
Okay. Uh, it was something else I ordered from Amazon that came in. <laughs> I should really check my Amazon orders. It's uh, some phone chargers, some quick uh, phone chargers. So uh, those are going into the bug out bag too. All right. In any case, let's uh, talk with Tanner really quick about Patrick Pierce. Now I know, I know the answer, the how to successfully solve this puzzle and how to unsuccessfully solve this puzzle. But we'll still talk with everyone about it who we're going to be seeing if we're on the floor for that person. Tim, I wanted to ask you a couple of questions about Patrick Pierce. Linux is back again, I reckon. I just want to help the man out. He's at the bar right now, not too far off from drowning in alcohol. I'd like to help too, but we've done all we could. Patrick died in his sleep. Pasquale examined him after death, and again after that, on Linux's insisting. No visible traces of injury, external or internal. The body is still being kept on ice. Even after a month or so, he refuses to bury him. These things happen. He might have gotten in contact with something toxic, and unfortunately, he passed on. I'm afraid Linux is just looking for someone to blame for his loss so he could relieve the pain in a certain way. All right. Well, take care then, Mr. Tanner. Oh, can we pick his pocket now? Right up front? We're going right up, right up to him between the tables, nonetheless. He has nothing on him. All right, then. Smart. Okay, let's go to the armory. And sell some stuff to Lucas. First, though, we'll ask him about Patrick Pierce. Ah, uh, yeah, poor guy died in his sleep, Tim. And even though Pascal never pinpointed the cause, I hope it was swift and painless. Most of us grew pretty fond of him, and you'd be hard-pressed to find one who hasn't. What was he like? He was very, uh... What's the proper word here? Focused. Yeah, focused. He'd start working on something and not be done with it until it's perfect. That's how he did everything. Then Brett comes along with the, as the only one complaining. Apparently, Patrick installed some heaters and they didn't work as they should. So, big complainer threw a bit of a tantrum. But, heh, yeah, Brett. Okay, well, let's barter. Okay... So you, you're not the person who sells al uh, aluminum. But maybe you have better... Okay, you don't have any better ar uh, armor bits on you. Okay, but you are buying a bunch of stuff I possess. So, and you're buying boots. So we'll sell some boots, we'll sell the belt. Let's see. We can sell this sniper rifle unrepaired to you. You're buying two firearms? We'll sell this one as well. That's all your cash. Can we get a bipod? We can. Can we get a extended magazine? We can. How about a shotgun choke? Uh, we can, if I'm willing to not get all his cash, I'm willing to accept less than 400 credits. All those bits are things that can be used to help you craft weapons and make them more expensive to sell them. So, that's why I do what I do. Let's go... Engineering and Cyber Labs. And we'll start with Ezra. Tim? What do you know about Patrick Pierce's death? His death occurred not too long ago, before you came to Southgate Station, if I'm not mistaken. It's unusual. What do you mean by unusual? Unusual death. Very peaceful. Pasquale never discovered what caused it. I think he could have been more thorough with his autopsy, but I find it hard to blame him, as one cannot blame a man for prioritizing the living over the dead. Can you tell me what he was like as a person? Patrick? Decent. Good in his field of work. That's all I have to say. Do you know a man called Watt Pear? 
His eye stares at you, but reveals nothing. No. Interesting. He told me he was visited by two men many years ago in Old Junkyard, one of which looked very much like yourself, Ezra, based on his description. It was around the time of that mutagen disaster. You are speaking to the wrong man, Tim. I suggest you seek that doppelganger of mine and continue this conversation with him, because I can't help you. Was that all you wanted to ask of me? Let's trade. I wonder if you have persuasion if you get another, uh, if you're able to get him to, or intimidate, if you can actually get him to tell you that information. And it looks like you have no high quality plasma cores. You do have a great electromagnetic deflector. Smart modules, seeker lens, which we don't need. Oh, you will sell better. We don't have any biology, and I'm not going to have biology for some time, so I shouldn't look at any of those. How about shield bits? 140 medium shield modulator, but 112 electronics is not something we'll have for quite some time. 102. I think I have some already waiting for us. Goggles. Nothing better. Oh, a neuroscopic temporal manipulation headband. I didn't realize he sold special headbands. I thought that was something we had to craft. Interesting. But I don't think the only temporal manipulation ability we're using that can that could crit would be distortion. And I I'm not using that that often. I also don't want my chance to dodge decreased by 25%, so I won't be taking it. All psionic skills improved by 11. No, I think we're okay at the moment. How about shields? Okay, he's got nothing better. I have nothing to sell him. The taser. The taser blueprint. Oh my goodness. One of the reasons I came here. As long as I'm here, I suppose we might as well grab the psionic headband recipe. Okay. Harold? What's up? What do you know about Patrick Pierce's death? Ah, yeah, I knew Pat well. He was a man one could truly lie on. An honest man. I felt really sad when I heard about his death, you know? I seen his brother in tears when he first came here after he found out. Man, it's been like two months and he still comes back here. I just don't get why Pascal doesn't do the full autopsy and put this thing to rest. But it's his business. What was Pat like? A hard-working man. Fun to hang out with. Be hard-pressed to find someone who disliked him. Well, maybe Big Brett, as the two of them had several heated arguments over the way Pat installed some of the hopper pen heaters. Brett can be impulsive at times. He takes his job seriously. And it is a serious job, I agree. But he can take it too far sometimes. Let's show me what you got. So, what level is this? Oh, wow, that's awful. <laughs> quality 16. All right, so we did not get lucky with the quality of the gear for sale here today. As you can see from the Tychrome Spikes, he is he can sell high-quality things. We just didn't get lucky. All right. All right, that's it. Let's check out... Mr. Pierce's room. Whew. While I'm here, I guess we can check our lockers. The game still considers us a member of Southgate Station, but I consider us actually a member of Core City now that we have a house there. I've got stuff here still! Some decent food. Oh, look at all the and and healing stuff over here. 
What the heck? Can I carry all this back to Core City with me? We can. We will. I did not realize I had so, so much stuff here. This is Mr. Pierce's room. Broken thermostat. The thermostat looks like it has been smashed pretty badly by someone. There's a personal laptop here. Patrick Pierce. We don't know the password. We don't have any hacking. Mortuary key card. This key card can be used to access the morgue in Southgate Station. Well, we'll grab that. A decent pistol and some rounds. I'm not going to take anything from his room since it might be under investigation, but it's not. <laughs> but uh, we'll leave everything that he's got in his room. In his room. So we have a laptop we can't access. Let's go back to the commons and ask if his brother knows the password. Hmm? Oh, Tim. I need the password for Patrick's laptop. Uh, let me think. Try sec Hyphen 1456. One one yeah, 1456. Or was it sec 1465? It was his old password if he hadn't uh, changed it. But I doubt it. He's been using that one for years. All right, thanks for the passwords. I'll go try them. Okay, well, let's see if either of these work. Six five, wrong one. Five six, correct one. Please select one of the following options. Uh, audio logs. Big Brett's pen heating. The big jackass came today and brought me a smashed thermostat. He was so angry at me, started screaming and calling me incompetent. Oh, an incompetent nincompoop, whatever that is. Since the brutes smash it in anger, I can't tell if he's just stupid and doesn't know how to use it, or the unit itself had a problem. I'll check it out later. Vera's computer. Apparently I'm a computer expert now. Vera called me the other day to see why her computer was freezing. I took a quick look but couldn't figure it out couldn't figure out what was wrong with it. Reminded herself to check it out later, after I fixed the lock pad in medical. Linux. He has called again. He wants to see me. He's worried about my back hurting again. Damn it. I've had these problems since the Core City riots, and he knows that the pain periodically comes and goes. Reminder to self, call him and tell him I'm fine. I shouldn't have even told him about the pain returning in the first place. Door Medical. Pasquale asked me to see what's wrong with the door lock pad in Medical. He mentioned the card is usually recognized after the ninth or tenth time, which is, of course, unacceptable. He gave me a spare to test it later, and figure out why the bloody thing won't work. Reminder, let's check out the lights in the operating room. One of them is flickering, and the patients are getting nervous. Quinton. Quinton stopped by to talk about Big Jackass. He thinks I've got something against him, and that I'm messing up the heaters on purpose. Like, he knows I'm doing my best, but if I've got something against Brett Jackass, I should talk to Tanner about it, not be a jerk. Also, I'm seriously endangering the whole station by hurting the hoppers. I'm already convicted, I guess. Damn it with everyone here, but there's got to be that someone or two. Technical documentation. This folder contains multiple ebooks and manuals and various equipment. Other than that, you find nothing important. I don't think I can lock this door. I can't. All right, so let's go and talk with his brother again. And then we'll wrap up this session. 
And we'll talk with Pasquale about the brother in the next episode. Hmm? Oh, Tim. So, Linux, what can you tell me about Patrick? Pat was a good man. Uh, Hardworking, dedicated. He was the best brother a man can hope for. I... I just can't let this all go, you dig? I have this terrible feeling about his death. And these jerks won't let me know the truth. I know, I know it, I know it, damn it. Whatever happened to him, he didn't... He didn't deserve it. That I can swear. What did Patrick do in Core City? Didn't I tell you about that already? Nope. Strange, I could have sworn I mentioned it. Pat and I, we were orphans. Our mother, uh, died when we were young. And Dad, we never, uh... Never met him. So we had to take care of ourselves. Uh, or more precisely, Pat had to take care of us both. After years of doing whatever earns coin, scavenging and the like you dig, Pat and I come to Core City. It was just after Biocorp fell apart. Maybe sometime after. Riots and chaos filled the streets. Praetorian security, newly formed at the time, needed men to help him fight the uh, rioters. And all that bunch. The pay was good, so he, um, Pat joined. He was young and you dig burly. So he became an enforcer. What can you tell me about Praetorian security? They were trying to take control over the city, and uh, they eventually did. They are one of the major factions in Core City now, but they were a marble back then compared to the boulder they are um, are now. All right, continue. Pat and I both stayed in Core City due to his work, and uh, it went well for a while. Unfortunately, he was hurt during one of the riots. A brute with a sledgehammer um, slammed him right in the spine. The bastard got him real bad, so bad he had to leave Praetorian security. As he couldn't do this, his job anymore. He was also hurt, uh, mentally. He saw things, horrible things. Rarely talked about it, but I could see it. We left Core City after that. Nothing for us there anymore. I took care of him until his back got better. Uh, and then we, spit, we split. He went around, learned to work with electronics. He didn't want to be a scavenger his whole life. So he roamed uh, before settling here, here in Southgate Station. He told me he was happy here, that he finally found a place he could feel safe and, and at home. Tears began rolling out of his eyes to refill his glass. Damn it. And what about you? What did you do after the split? He wipes his eyes. I had to learn to take care of myself. I uh, went to work in Foundry for a while as a miner. But since I valued my life somewhat, I left that place. The pay was good, you dig? Uh, but that place is a death trap. Then I worked at Junkyard Docks. I did all sorts of things. It would take time to mention them all. What do you think caused Patrick's death? Something's wrong. Just wrong. A healthy man died in his sleep without a known cause? And they uh, told me there's no point investigating any further? There's no evidence of foul play or whatever they said. Natural death? That is why you are here. I want... I need the truth. All right, I'm back on it. All right, viewer, we'll stop here. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, everyone.